Out of all the gin joints in all the towns, she walks into my Play it, Sam. Hi, welcome to the Ruby Tuesday. My name is Ruben, and this is my review for Kurtz. Kurtz? Kurt. Kurtz. Cortez. Cortez. As America prepares to enter World War II, Hungarian film director Michael Cortez grapples with political intervention and a dysfunctional relationship with his estranged daughter amid the troubled production of Casablanca in 1942. Casablanca is now regarded as one of the all-time greats uh, of films of all time. And I know it's probably a film that a lot of people haven't actually seen. Um, if you want to see it, it's on Netflix. Now Netflix put it on their list a few weeks ago, early March, and now they've put this on and so this film is basically about the production of Casablanca how it got made during the World War II how um, the political intervention shaped the making of the film and how the director had to tackle the political stuff that is going on in amongst uh, turmoil of the whole production and family uh, issues that he had to deal with so really it's like a would have forced look at the film of Casablanca but it's also just a look at the character of who Michael Cortez was he was regarded as one of the best directors of all time he was also regarded as really cruel and kind at the same time in production and that they even go so far as to word some of that in this film um, at the beginning of the film you get this little kind of synopsis saying that this film is based on a true story but some of the plots within here um, have been dramatized to create a I, I guess a dramatized version of the actual story so not everything is exactly right as it was but most of it is Thomas Ivan Tapolonsky is the director of this and he has directed this film in complete black and white except for a couple of times where you have a blue hue and red silhouette uh, scenes and it works it really helps to put you in the moment uh, when it was filmed you know they were doing the film in black and white and so to have this film in black and white it kind of makes sense and it really helps you you know put you in the mood of oh this is the kind of the grand scale you get kind of the hollywood vibe and as you see the productions and the sets and the stuff that goes on behind the scenes it really kind of gives you an idea what it must have been like i feel like they've gone through great pains uh, to kind of really be authentic authentic as much as they can i like what they did with some of the leading stars as well because obviously they couldn't have them in and they didn't do like the de-aging thing they just kind of blurred their faces so ingrid bergman you know she's one of the great humpy Berg bogart obviously a genius on camera and so they had to have them because these are the stars of the film and you get to see how they would have interacted or what they would have felt or the stories behind you know how they came to be uh, on the film and so you see them but you don't really see them you see the back of them you see the silhouettes you hear them talk even when the talks are I was reminded immediately of just how great he was he had that presence on screen and she had that presence on screen that you just know that yeah they're fantastic but then you see why they're so fantastic it's not just their acting talent is how they were directed and if Michael Kurtz was as good as he says he is or the way they portray him in this film you'll see it was a hard taskmaster but he knew every aspect of the film so from that aspect this film is very good to watch because you kind of get a, a glimpse into their world but as a film on its whole I think artistically it's quite clever you get the silhouettes of shadows it's very Hitchcock in some places you get to see where he gets some of the ideas I like all that but it is dragged out somewhat it's very um, uh, just say look at me look how cool I am look at my silhouettes look at you know it, it's really kind of showing off in moments and that can take away a bit from the actual story and the movement of the film when this film works well is when there are when there is conflicts between the characters and the the politics is actually surprisingly most interesting because of the politics that's of what's going on so the government had a major hand in um, shaping this film they wanted this to be the American flagship film and it was for the most part it was the film that they used to drive men into the army to help basically fund the war with bodies and so the reason why the film is the way it is is because of what they did in their film and how the government had a hand in saying no we want this it needs to go this way not this way and uh, so that is it's very political we do have some films in our history that have shaped history and this is one of them 
uh, all you got to do is look at the production and what went in to make this film, who was involved. It's very interesting in that way. Other than that, um, I don't know that you get to find all that much out about Michael Coates. I would have liked more. I felt like it concentrated maybe a little bit too much on just the Casablanca role. I would have liked to have maybe had a couple of flashbacks about you know where he got the influence of uh, he's uh, wanting to be a film director, maybe some shots of him in Hungary. Um, that would have been really nice to see. Uh, I think they had needed a little bit more padding that way because I felt like his character was just, he's the director, but I felt like there's so much more to him than that. It's a very interesting film, very different, very brave doing it in black and white, but it really worked. I love the color palette. I love some of the, some of the shadow noir silhouettes um, and the classical music that goes in it just makes you feel like you're watching one of those old 1940s uh, films like Casablanca. Um, although I think it's in, was it in color in the end? I'm not sure. I need to go back and watch Casablanca. But, you know, it has some of the most quotable lines in film history. It's one of the most famous films of all time. So this was a very interesting, this was actually made in 2018, but Netflix bought the rights, so it's now a Netflix original film. Um, if you like film in itself and you want to know how it's made and you love the history of it, then I think you'll be somewhat entertained. This film won't be for everybody, though. Um, it is kind of a niche film, uh, but I thought it was good. I'm going to give this a B plus. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about this. Had you heard of it? Are you going to watch it? Do you like Casablanca? Are you one of those people that have never seen Casablanca? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching this review, but most of all, until next time, remember, live long on Tuesday.